She is a digital marketing specialist who can spin the meanest website around. And he's host of the TV show Buzz, which features nonprofit organizations receiving marketing makeovers. Here on Buzz for Good, we talk all things nonprofit, the people they serve and the good they do. And we talk to creative professionals and provide marketing tips and tools to help your nonprofit achieve more. That's right. Buzz. Buzz. Well, greetings and welcome everyone to Buzz for Good, our radio and TV show simulcast that we present thanks to our partners at WFIR and Blue Ridge PBS. Here at Buzz for Good, we talk all things nonprofit, the good that they do in our communities in Southwest Virginia. Uh, and we also feature the marketing professionals who donate their time and talent to help these nonprofits achieve more buzz. So we invite you to reach out on our social media channels at Buzz for Good. That is on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, as well as on our website, buzzforgood.com. That's buzz number four, good.com. And stay in communication with us throughout this show or afterwards. And we will uh, follow up on all of your questions and concerns at our next episode of Buzz for Good. My name is Michael Hemphill. I am creator and host of the TV show Buzz that airs on PBS. Uh, on each episode, we feature a, a nonprofit organization in our region and the good that it does in our community. And the marketing professionals with the American Advertising Federation of Roanoke who help these nonprofits achieve more buzz. And speaking of AAF Roanoke, I am Carrie Cousins, current president of AAF Roanoke, and I'm the director of digital marketing at Lead Point Digital, a marketing agency here in Roanoke, Virginia. This is a vital, vital time for nonprofits as they try to make sure that they secure the charitable contributions that they so desperately need in order to continue providing their mission for the community. And with that, Carrie. Well, that's right. End of year giving can be one of the strongest fundraising times of the year for nonprofits. And what happens is you get to December 1st, December 5th, maybe December 10th, and you haven't started yet. So what we want to talk about today are a few things you still have time to do to kind of get that push through the door for the last little bit of the year. I think I read somewhere at one point, maybe this was outdated at this point, but at one time, nonprofits relied on about 70% of their charitable contributions just over the course of December. And that happens regularly, and it also happens with corporate donations, too, mm -hmm. because of tax benefits. So really, this is a key time to make sure you get your fundraising goals over the finish line. All right, so what you got? Let's start. Remind donors about company matching. Yes. So you can maximize gifts to your organization if each individual takes part in their corporate matching program for donations. If you can provide a form on your website, instructions to make that easier, or even tips to help them figure out if their company has a corporate match, that's almost free money for you from your individual donors. Mm -hmm. Great, great tip. Include an ask on your annual receipt. You know, one thing we always do when we get that donation is we send the receipt. Include a link with an additional ask. Mm. A little bit of information that says, for 10 more dollars, you could help fill in the blank. That's an extra little push at the end of the year. So do you recommend when, you know, let's say someone makes a contribution in March, they would typically receive a tax contribution letter at that time. But do you recommend also sending another one out at the end of the year that maybe? Uh, exactly. Okay. So you're sending an annual receipt at this time. This is whether that person donated one time $10 or made 15 $10 donations. Mm. Collect them all into a single annual receipt with that extra little ask. Okay. It also makes life easy for your donor, right? Yep. Do you still have all those receipts from March? Probably not. Same here. Or I would rather, yeah, just have them all in one place. Well, all in one, make it easy. Right. If it's easy for someone to donate to you, they'll remember and they'll donate again. Very nice, okay. Create a quick and easy social campaign, right? It's time for end of year donations. Please share any leftovers you may have with us. These are simple messages that you can post on social media to remind people about end of year giving. Okay. You all know that people start to check out a little bit in December, but those reminders can be really helpful. Is there, do you recommend maybe even like a, 
a mini campaign during this time? That's the next tip. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I promise I wasn't even looking at your notes. That's okay. okay. So I recommend trying burst campaigns. Hmm. So do a 48 hour campaign with a small goal online, reminding people about end of year donations. Mm -hmm. Tie it to Christmas, tie it to another holiday this time of year, tie it to it's Freaky Friday, whatever you want your goal to be, create these little short burst campaigns to get a little boost in end of year giving. Great suggestion. And be realistic with it as well. So That's why we say small goals. Right, right. These are like probably $100, $500, $1,000 goals because you're talking about short periods of time. Okay. People don't like an unattainable goal, so make it attainable and realistic for your organization. Good, good, all right. Write a blog post about the benefits that come from end of year giving. Now you might need some help here. This is a good time to reach out to your CPA and do something that's a partnership and outline what tax benefits actually come with end of year gifts and donations as a whole. Mm -hmm. That can be a really good reminder or if someone's teetering on the edge of a tax bracket, it can push them to donate a little more. Excellent, all right. Send a thank you. This seems so easy, right? It kinda goes in line with your annual receipt. Send an email to everyone in your donor database, recapping what you did this year mm -hmm. and thanking them for their support with a call to give a little more. It's easy. It also will make you feel good to look back on your year and see what you've done. That's a great suggestion. I'm affiliated with one organization and they were really debating, can we afford to do another print mailing here at the end of the year? And they decided they probably could not. Uh, they wanted to rely on just email, but it costs nothing to make a phone call. Right, phone calls and email are free. Right, love it. And then our final tip is add a banner to your website reminding people to make gifts before December 31st for a maximum tax benefit with a link to your online donation form. Mm -hmm. It sounds overly simple, but it's something that gets in front of every single person who comes to your website between now and December 31st. Fabulous, fabulous. You know, you're talking about you know, reaching out to your CPA and maybe getting a little write-up from him or her. Maybe also realize maybe it's, this is a great time just to reach out to a, a, a donor from that year mm -hmm. or a, you know, someone you've served from that year, get a little testimonial from that person to put it out on your social media. The social proof is huge. Yeah. You know, people like to connect with other people. If I see a social post of someone I know talking about an organization, I'm going to stop and look. And that's all you need to get someone's attention. Love it. Now, this is all being directed at the nonprofits, but for everyone out in the community, I would just like to say, hey, Support the nonprofits that are operating in your sphere or that uh, you have re reached out to in the past, regardless of your tax bracket or whether it's going to help you financially. These are the organizations that are making our community sustainable and thrive. And so please use this time of, uh, of spirit and holiday giving to give back to these organizations that whose sole mission is to simply make our communities better places to live. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, happy holidays yes, to you. Yes, happy holidays. We will be back on air for one final show in 2021. And that is our December 25th Christmas Day episode. And then we're going to take off the following week and be back in January whenever uh, we can I have that time slot on WFIR and are not being preempted by Virginia Tech basketball. Go Hokies. Go Hokies. <laughs> Until then, we'd love to hear how you or your nonprofit is being a buzz for good in our communities. And we'll see you back next time on Buzz for Good. <laughs>